everybody welcome to the backyard today we're going to do a little side for the fall it's been a little bit cooler here lately and yes it is technically fall but everybody's mind is going there everybody's so tired of the heat we endured this summer they are wishing fall in here so we're going to prepare a side for you today which has fall in mind 100 percent now we've got an acorn squash which I prepped already to save time. Acorn squash comes this size. You can get them slightly larger, smaller, but this is about the average size they come. You want to cut them in half and you want to clean the seeds out of the inside and get it really good and clean. Now you can cut them, I cut it this way. You can cut it the other way if you prefer, but for the purpose of this dish, we're going to roast these and they will lay this way a little open a lot easier okay and again this is for the fall and it is spaghetti squash i mean not spaghetti squash acorn squash in here we have two apples cubed and we put a pretty good amount of lemon juice on these one to keep them from turning brown but one the lemon kind of helps a lot of things that are going on and to that, we want to add one, a half of a shallot. So I'm going to say about two tablespoons of onion. Now, if you can't find a shallot, you can use a red onion. They're very similar. And in this is a half a teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of pepper, a teaspoon of cinnamon, and a teaspoon of nutmeg. Now you can adjust this to your taste, folks. This is two tablespoons of brown sugar. And in here we've got some chopped olives. Not chopped olives, I'm sorry. Chopped walnuts. I don't know where my mind went there. Chopped walnuts. And you want to put some in there. I'm going to say, well, you know what? I'm going to put all of that in there. That was one small bag or about... A third a cup this is dried cranberries and those you want to put in to taste now again folks this mixture you can do it a lot of different ways if you don't want this in here you're welcome to do something else and make this your own I strongly encourage you to do this this can be a savory or it can be sweet you can put a little sweet potato in here uh i like a little more nutmeg than i do cinnamon but that's just me you can use pomegranate seeds you could use pears instead of apples and i slosh them out folks you just want to get this well blended together now, folks we got that well blended together like this right here and again, you're free to take this mixture however you want. Now, we're going to put a little bit of butter. I'm going to say a fairly good sliver. That's a good term for you. Inside of here. Because it is going to melt, obviously. And then we want to spoon this mixture inside here and all over the table and everything else that's how i tend to do things and for me it's so much easier to cook outside because all this mess is much easier for me to deal with You can hump these up and fill them up. This will cook down just a little bit. And uh, like I say, you're welcome to take this mixture however you want. Now we're going to cook these today in a 10 inch deep Dutch oven. And we have that Dutch oven right here. And we're using a 10 because these are small. We want to make sure that they stay standing up. Sometimes you have to prop them against the side or you have to uh, 
put something in your Dutch oven to hold them upright. But we're going to get those two in there. So folks, we got those inside here. We're uh, going to get some coals out of our fire and cook these for you. And then we're going to show you what these look like when we come back. But I'm going to step off pace for a minute and explain this. Emmett has worked hard today on fixing a sign. We have a sign we carry with us and we do certain events. It tells it the name of our chuck wagon and we write our menu on here. Well, we typically have done that in chalk. Emmett put some paint and come up with a little design today, and we want to thank Emmett for that help. So, folks, we're going to get this to cook. We're going to come back in a little bit and share the result. Hey folks, how y'all doing? We got this uh, acorn squash roasted off and cooked. Uh, and like I say, folks, this is a good fall recipe. And you're welcome to try this. And I encourage you to try this different ways. We got this roasted off. If you want yours real soft, roast it a little longer. This went for about an hour. Uh, I really don't know what temperature I would have to <clears throat> I would have to say 350 would be the right one but in a Dutch oven with coals on it hold a hand over it for about five seconds if you can hold it longer than five seconds put a little more heat if you can't hold it five seconds you may be a little too hot you want to make sure that if you do this in the house in your oven you cover it it needs that steam action happening inside the Dutch oven or inside an enclosed container. I want to taste this really quick, folks. It's going to be a little hot, but that nutmeg really comes through. And I'm a big nutmeg fan when it comes to fall and desserts, as well as savory sides. So, folks, this is just a way for you to experiment around and try something different. This is a pretty little dessert not dessert it's a pretty little side it can be a dessert now you can take this and put some honey uh agave nectar you can do some things like that and put more fruit in it and you can the acorn squash will take on a sweeter type taste to it than if you do it a savory way it's just a unique squash and i i really like it I mean, it's really uh, something that's interesting. Folks, I'm going to comment just a little bit briefly on, uh, we did a video some time ago on brisket and pulled pork. And we had a couple of questions. If I wrap my brisket, I do not do that. I cook it fat side up, and as soon as I put it in the smoker, I leave it just like that until it's done. I don't take it off and wrap it. Now, a lot of people do that. There's a lot of ways that people are very successful doing that. I have done it. I have pulled my brisket off when I was in a situation where I was running out of wood or running out of fire and I needed to do it. I would wrap that brisket in butcher paper and put it in a cooler and close the cooler up. And that cooler will actually act as an oven. That internal heat within the brisket will help finish it off. And that's just a trick you learn from getting in a train wreck every once in a while. So, folks. I'm going to let you zoom in here and take a little look at this. But uh, I just enjoy doing these videos, and we appreciate you watching them. Have a good day, and enjoy your food.